So, air or water cooling? That's probably a question you've asked yourself if you've built a computer before. And lots of YouTubers and reviewers have tried to answer this question a lot before. And the most famous one is undoubtedly Linus's air versus water cooling videos from a while back. In fact, I think he made like four videos comparing air cooling versus water cooling. And the last one was just a bit confusing to me, his results. Because in his testing, he showed that the Noctua NHU-12A defeated the Corsair H150i Pro and the H105, which are a 360mm radiator for the H150 and a really thick 240mm radiator for the H105. And that's just really weird because that's not what I've seen from my own usage myself and from lots of other reviewers as well where they've tested lots of coolers. I've never seen an air cooler actually beat out a water cooler that's significantly bigger as well in terms of size. And not only that, the gap was quite big when you consider the noise level was also lower on the Noctua cooler. Now I know Noctua is a good company and they make good coolers and fans. I mean, that's the whole reason I outfitted my whole system here, my personal PC, with Noctua fans and coolers. But they're not that good to defy the laws of physics. There's just absolutely no way I could see that a 120mm based air cooler, the NHU-12A, could beat a 240 or even a 360mm radiator. Now, what I have on hand is the Noctua NH-D15S uh, CPU air cooler here that I've outfitted with triple 3000 RPM Noctua IPPC fans. This is my own personal rig. I really don't care too much about noise. I actually do run these fans at maximum speed when I do need them, like if I do long renders or something like that. And I'm gonna test this cooler versus the Silverstone PF240W ARGB water cooler, which is just a simple 240 millimeter radiator water cooler that you could find. Uh, and it's not even the most expensive one or the biggest one because it's a it's just a just a typical slim 240 millimeter radiator that's installed on this cooler, and the performance will be pretty similar across all other 240 millimeter radiators that you find on AIO liquid coolers of different brands. That's just the way it is because of the surface area of this thing. Now I know that on Linus's video he tested like the noise level and the temperatures on like an enclosed room that's supposed to be like temperature controlled. I don't re really have the luxury of that, so I'm just going to test both of these cooler in my personal rig which has a Ryzen 9 3900X which I've overclocked using PVO and the EDC bug which is basically the best way to overclock Ryzen CPUs right now that I could find and I have a guide up here if you want to take a look at that. It's a, it's a really interesting way to boost your performance without losing your single core speeds in Ryzen CPUs and it does make it run really hot because it does pump a bit more than you need in terms of voltage onto the CPU when you're running all core workloads. And because of that, you actually really do need a really good cooler to keep temperatures in check. And my choice was at the NHD15 for my own personal PC, but I know that a water cooler should perform better. But I didn't know how much it would perform better compared to a standard NHD15, which is basically if I ran these fans at 1500 RPM, it'll perform pretty much similar to like an NHD15 from Noctua out of the box. And I also wanted to see if 3000 RPM fans would actually help this cooler beat the water cooler as well, if at all. And I would also have the Side Fuma 2, whoops, which I haven't clipped the fan here. The Side Fuma 2 here, which is one of the best value air coolers you could find because of its quite massive size for the price point. And you get two fans, although these are quite fans. So this, I really am not expecting it to get close to even the NHD15, but I just wanted to see what a low budget and good value air cooler is gonna do against a water cooler like this one from Silverstone, which is pretty much as good as it gets unless you go to triple radiator or like even bigger radiators. But really for a 3900X, which is just outputting just under 200 watts, this is more than enough to dissipate all of the heat of this radiator and even with this heatsink. So the real performance differentiator between the two coolers is actually the thermal carrying capacity or like how much how well it conducts the heat off of the CPU onto the heat dissipating surface, which is the radiator or the heat sink in this case. Now, in air coolers, you rely on heat pipes, which do use liquid in them. So you could kind of say this is water cooling because it does have some liquid. The difference is that in air coolers like this one, the heat pipes require heat to evaporate the water to then evaporate onto the ends of the heat, heat pipes where there's heat sinks touching them. 
and then it'll then condense and flow back onto the heat pipe base through a wick system and sometimes even aided by gravity if you installed it this way but really gravity doesn't really matter much because they have wicks so basically it evaporates to the heat pipes and then condenses on the heatsink surface on the inside and then goes back to the copper base where it picks up more heat from the cpu and it's a cycle that it repeats but because of the nature that it requires heat to start moving the water it obviously will not move the water as fast or as efficiently as a water cooler which just has an actual pump moving the water across the whole system so in terms of like physics i really don't see it being able to beat a water cooler because it just doesn't make sense a heat pipe simply can't move water as fast as a pump so let's just take a look at the results here i'm not using a fixed clock overclock with a fixed uh, power consumption so it's kind of varying between the coolers but that's on purpose because i wanted to see how much of a clock speed difference this makes from going from water cooler to air cooler or a cheaper air cooler even and even faster and slower fans on the noctua so with this testing you can see here that the noctua is not beating the Silverstone water cooler, which is really just as expected. This is a typical 240 millimeter AIO, which is really popular size that a lot of people use for their builds. And you can see that the performance of this water cooler beats the air cooler quite handily. There's quite a big difference of a few degrees in, in the temperatures. And because of that, the CPU clock speeds also dropped a little bit more with the air cooler in the Noctua NHD 15, and even if I turned up the fans to 3000 RPM, it still couldn't close the gap. Because the problem is that it's not the heatsink couldn't dissipate enough heat, so more fan speed didn't really help much because the heatsink was already not even hot to touch. It was pretty much ice cold and the air coming out the back was just lukewarm. The problem was that you can't transfer enough heat fast enough to the heatsink from the CPU. While a water cooler can easily do that with the pump moving the water around on the base and to the radiator. So the bottleneck is not the size of the heatsink or the size of the radiator in this case, but the, how fast you can transfer the heat from the CPU to the dissipating surface. So this brings back the question to how the heck did Linus's video show that the NHU-12A defeated the bigger water coolers? And I think the problem with that video was that he didn't show the testing methodology of those coolers. Like, did he run them at maximum fan speeds? Or is it like auto-controlled from the motherboard, which really will skew, skew the results really badly? Well, from what I've seen, I think it's, the problem is that they probably ran the pump of the motherboard or something, or had some kind of pump speed control software going on that lowered the speed of the pump because the noise levels were quite in line with what the H150i Pro makes from the other reviews, but then the temperatures were still worse than the NHU-12A, which is the Noctua cooler, which is not going to perform as well as an NHD-15, or even an NHD-15 with 3000 RPM fans, which is going to be even better. So I don't understand how that small cooler from Noctua could be beat a 360 radiator, while this NHD-15S with triple 3000 RPM fans cannot make cannot beat a 240mm AAO, which is smaller than what Linus used to test. So there must be something wrong in the way he tested it. Either the pump was running slower, that it caused it to not transfer the heat as well and be hotter, or some other factors that I do not know. But the point is, is that his video was not that accurate. The real answer to air versus water cooling is that water cooling will always beat air cooling, simply because you can move the heat faster to the heat dissipation surface compared to just air cooling which relies on heat pipes which relies on heat to actually boil off the water instead of having a pump to move the water to cool the surface so it's just a the law of physics i don't see it beating um, water cooling anytime soon even well unless they have some kind of magical uh, heat pipe that can do that even more efficiently but what are the benefits of water cooling versus air cooling then aside from being better performance. Well, they're easier to install, at least in my experience, because you could just mount the radiator and the fans onto the case, then you can just mount the pump block onto the CPU and it doesn't cover anything on your motherboard, so access to components is easier. And on tight ITX cases, you can mount the radiator somewhere else so that the area between your CPU and the side of the case could be really small and you could still have a good, like large radiator cooling your CPU efficiently. What about air cooling then? Well, I personally prefer air cooling myself, as you can see on my personal build. That's 
that's the whole reason I chose this Lian Li TU150 as my mobile like, workstation PC, which I take either to the US or here in Indonesia whenever I move, because air cooling is just simpler. It's just a big block of metal and the heat packs are sealed that won't ever deteriorate in performance. And the only thing that could fail is the fan. And if you use really good fans like these Noctuas, they basically don't ever fail. So there's really nothing to go wrong in that. Whereas in my experience, water cooling, you could have the pump fail and then you suddenly have bad performance over time or a pump that deteriorates in performance. So you suddenly get increasingly higher temperatures over time. Or you could have like a blockage in the pump or the radiator from the coolant that was contaminated in the factories and you could suddenly have really bad temperatures or slowly get bad temperatures over time. And I mean, I don't really replace coolers every like one or even two years. I keep coolers for a few years, like, like five years even or more than that. And from my experience of keeping water coolers that long, eventually their performance degraded so much that a simple air cooler like this would really easily outperform them. So the initial performance on water cooling might be better, but these closed loop water coolers, even though they're easy to install, you can't really maintain them. So they might eventually deteriorate in performance where the NHD15 would be this cooler. I do not know specifically for this Silverstone cooler because I don't have this for a long time yet. Hopefully it'll work well, but I've had a few Corsair coolers and a few Cooler Master coolers to name a few that just deteriorated in performance so much that I couldn't even use it on my overclock CPU anymore. So I just went back to air cooling because it's just so much simpler and there's nothing to go wrong with air cooling. But yeah, for maximum performance, water cooling is gonna be the best choice. There's just no way around it. Moving water around your CPU block and cooling the CPU with moving water is just way better than relying on a heat pipe. But yeah, it's really just a choice. Maximum performance right now, and if you feel like you're gonna replace it in the near future, then it doesn't matter if it doesn't last, then water cooling is fine. But if you wanna keep your PC and cooler for a long time, air cooling is the best choice because even though it doesn't have the highest peak performance, it'll probably sustain that performance over its lifetime without degrading even slightly. But yeah, that's it for this video. I just wanted to make a video about air versus water cooling on my own take and for my own testing. I hope you do enjoy it. And if you do, maybe leave a like and maybe click the subscribe button to see more videos of me that are more interesting than this if you don't find this interesting. So comment down below if you found this interesting and what do you think about air versus water cooling as well. But yeah, thank you for watching.